having installed the GPS tracking device. Now it's time to configure the device to work with the backend server, so I can get real-time updates on the vehicle we are about when I log into the tracking platform. Generally speaking, there are two ways we can configure a tracking device. One way of doing this is to use a configurator offered by the device manufacturer. The configurator is usually a desktop app that allows user plug in the device to a computer and set values for the different configuration parameters, which will be discussed shortly. Another way of configuring a tracking device is through what is referred to as over-the-air configuration or OTA configuration, which is the method that we use in configuring the Coban GPS303F tracking device I just installed. Over-the-air configuration means we can configure the device even after it's been deployed at the front end, as it requires no physical access to the device. To configure a device over the air, we simply send structured SMS instructions or commands to the SIM number assigned to the tracking device during installation. Just the same way I sent a stop command that instructed the device to immobilize the vehicle while testing the immobilizer function in the previous lesson. Here is a list of activities I will be performing in this lesson. First, I will fetch the device IMEI number. Then, I will initialize the device to the factory default settings. Next, I will set the server IP address and port number, so the device knows what address to forward updates on vehicle we are about to. Also, I will set the network parameters like access point name or APN as it is popularly called, including the APN username and password. When I'm done setting the network parameters, I will proceed to enable GPRS. This is done to enable the device push updates through the data network. Afterwards, I will set the device time to GMT plus one, which is the Nigerian time. I will proceed to set the update interval to specify how often the device will push updates to the backend server. After this, I will change the device factory set password. It is important I do this as a security measure to ensure only the few people I disclose the new password to can query and instruct the device. I will also show you how to set center number and admin numbers. This is another security feature that comes with this device. This enables us limit device user communication to only a few people. For Coban devices, we can limit device user communication to five people or five phone numbers to be more precise, meaning we can configure the device to respond to queries and commands sent only from these five authorized numbers. Lastly, I will show you how to enable data logging to SD cards and how to load logged data to the server afterwards. Though I did not insert an SD card in the device I installed in a previous lesson, the reason being that the vehicle will rarely visit locations where there is no data network. However, there are scenarios when the use of SD cards become necessary, like when installing tracking devices on dump trucks that operate mostly at quarry sites, which are mostly located at the outskirts of the city, where data network may not always be available. SD cards will not provide data network where there is none, but we provide the device the storage space where it can log data pertaining to vehicle usage when the data network fails. Log data can then be pushed to the server when data network is available, but the device must first be configured to activate this feature. Before I go ahead to configure the device, I will first install Tracker Manager. This is the tracking app I will be monitoring the vehicle on. To download Tracker Manager, I will go to Play Store since I am using an Android phone and search Tracker Manager. Tracker Manager is also available on App Store. I am done installing the app. 
On first launch, the app prompts me to update my server address. Since I will be adding the tracking device to a hosted instance of Tracker server managed by CityWatch, I will go ahead to delete demo.tracker.org and enter citywatch.com.ng column 8082 and click start to effect my changes and log into the app. You only get the opportunity to update the server address the first time you launch the app after installation. If you miss this step, you have to reinstall the app. To log into the app, I will enter my email address and password. I have an account created on the platform already. To do the same, you will need to create a user account on the platform. Now I am logged in, so I will go ahead to add the device to the server. I will do this by entering device and vehicle details. I will name the vehicle Benz E200. You can use any name of your choice. I will enter the device IMEI number and the SIM number assigned to the device. The device IMEI number is usually printed on the sticker pasted on the device. You can also query the device to retrieve the IMEI number over the air via SMS. I will choose a device icon of my choice and save the settings. Now the device is added, but it's not yet online as you can see. When the device comes online, the device icon will change from red to green. Now I will proceed to configure the device so it can come online. To fetch the device IMEI number over the air, I will send a simple SMS query to the device. The query I will send in is IMEI123456. On receiving this query, the device sends a feedback message that contains the 15 digit device IMEI number. IMEI numbers are the unique identity numbers assigned to tracking devices. Each time the device pushes updates to the backend server, it sends its IMEI number so the server will know which device sends the update. To initialize the device to its factory settings, I will send begin 123456, typed together with no space in between. This message is sent to the SIM number assigned to the device. My instruction was successfully executed. So the device sends an SMS feedback that says begin OK. Every server has an IP address that is unique to it. Just the same way you will need to specify the address of an organization when sending a letter through the postman. Tracking devices need to specify the IP address of the backend tracking server when pushing updates to the server over the internet. On the server, there are several ports. Usually, a port number is assigned to only one particular device protocol. Device server protocols specify the rules of engagement between the tracking device and the backend server. See the server port number like the office room number assigned to the company executive who will act on your letter when the postman delivers it to the company. The command format for specifying the server IP address and port number is admin IP typed together with the device password. Give a space and type the server IP number. Give a space again and type the port number assigned to the device protocol on the server. To configure the device to push updates to CityWatch server, I will simply send admin IP 123456. I will give a space and type 47 
0.245.130.87 a space then 5001 5001 is a port number dedicated to all devices that implement the Coban device server protocol on the Trata server. I have received a feedback message from the device that says admin IP OK. This implies the device has successfully set the server IP and port number. Alternatively, you can set the server DNS instead of setting the server IP address. For instance, the command DNS123456 space gps.citywatch.com.ng space 5001 is another way of configuring the device to push update to CityWatch server. DNS are human readable and easier to remember than the server IP addresses. Next, I will set the network parameters. Here I will set the access point name or APN, the APN username and password. Since I inserted an Airtel SIM card into the device during the installation, I will configure the device to use Airtel 3G network parameters. To do this, I will send APN123456. I will give a space, then type internet.ng.airtel.com. I will give a space again and type internet. Then give a space, type internet. Internet.ng.airtel.com is the APN for Airtel 3G network in Nigeria. The username is internet and the password is internet. If I had used a SIM card from another network, say MCN Nigeria for instance, APN will be web.gprs.mcnnigeria.net. APN username is web, password is web. Find out the APN, username and password for whatever network you choose to use. You can easily research on Google to get this. To configure the device to push updates through the data network, I will send the command GPRS123456 as SMS to the SIM number assigned to the device. Next, I will specify how often I want the device to push updates to the backend tracking server. The structure of the command that accomplishes this is fix plus the three digit time interval when vehicle is in motion plus the three digit time interval when vehicle is stationary plus star 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 n plus the device password everything typed together without any space given in between for instance i want the device to push updates every 30 seconds when the vehicle is in motion but when the vehicle is parked i want the device to push updates to the server every one minute to accomplish this i will send fix 030s 001m star 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 n 123456 coban devices execute the fix command without providing feedback so you shouldn't expect any. At this point, my device should be live on the server. So I will log into the Tracker Manager app I installed earlier to check if the device is now online. Interesting, my device is online now. Clicking on the device should show me the real-time location of the vehicle on the map. Exactly the case. We are not yet done. There are still other configurations we need to make on the device. 
I will proceed with this shortly.